Hi guys and welcome to another top 10 video. This is going to be my top 10 games that I really am anticipating and what we saw at E3 and I really liked. Um, so we're going to start off with Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, Square Enix just released a new trailer overnight, kind of out of nowhere. It wasn't at the show, it wasn't at a conference, it was just overnight they released a uh, trailer. It gave us a uh, two minutes look of game gameplay and it was new gameplay. It wasn't like reused gameplay from old trailers and that was nice. Um, not a lot was shown though. It gave us a bit more of a look into the story. Uh, if you've played 2.8, obviously uh, uh, Maleficent and everyone is looking for this black box which no one actually knows what's in it. And it, it looks cool. Um, not really a lot was shown though. Um, they did say they were going to have another trailer next month. Uh, in July, so I can't wait for that. Uh, I would have it high on the list, but again, it wasn't really at the conference. It wasn't really on the floor. It wasn't at a conference. It just sort of was there, a trailer overnight for no reason. But hey, I'm not complaining. Uh, swiftly moving on, next to our list is God of War, or should we call it Dad of War? Uh, this is uh, the new uh, God of War game in the Sony series, which has become a staple for Sony at this point. Um, it focuses around Kratos and his son and they're kind of like trading in the Greek mythology for Norse legends and mythology uh, which is kind of like an interesting new angle um, it seems like it's a giant escort mission but it looks like the AI is clever enough to help you out and stuff so it's not like you're just gonna be like protecting your son the whole time uh, your son will actually probably be helping you and going out uh, killing enemies and giving you backup which I think is a very cool concept and if they do it very well they might actually do a very well made escort game, which is very rare. Uh, it's very hard to do escort games very well. So it's good to see that uh, if they do succeed with this, it would be good. Um, so that's in at number nine. It would have been higher on the list, but they didn't really show a lot more, in my opinion, to what they showed last year. Uh, just more of the same, which was great. Um, so after God of War... In at number 8, we have The Evil Within 2. Uh, I, they didn't really show gameplay. There was like a few snippets in the trailer they showed. But the trailer was amazing. They kind of had this like clay paint like animation where uh, the protagonist would like sort of like float in the paint and then go down and there'd be parts where a hand comes out the paint and it would like bend back. Oh, it's just so cool. It's kind of creepy. It's Evil Within it's meant to be creepy. While uh, you see things are changing up in the horror genre recently, with obviously Capcom changing up their formula for the Resident Evil 7, it's nice to see a game that's going back to the roots of horror. And it's more like the older Resident Evil kind of like entries, which so it'll be a third person shooter. And it'll come, it's going to be horror based. It, it just looks amazing. I'm expecting to see a lot of like freaky looking monsters like we did in the first game. Can't wait for it. Uh, I just wish we saw a bit more gameplay, but the gameplay from the first one was phenomenal, so I can only imagine it's better. I just hope they focus a bit more on story this time around. But yeah, definitely something I saw and I really enjoyed. Um, next on my list, uh, a game that took everyone by surprise, um, Anthem. Uh, this was briefly teased at the EA Play conference on Saturday. And then later on Sunday at the Microsoft, they showed the proper game. And it looked amazing. It was nice. It's like an open world game. It kind of has a Destiny vibe to it. I don't know if I like that. But if it's not too overbearing, it could be an interesting game. It kind of has like uh, Attack on Titan sort of feel as well. Because it's like a city that's walled in. And it's like you're trying to, you have to go out and get supplies and stuff to survive and stuff. And I'd be interested to see what they throw out. Um, I kind of like that concept in general, so I'll be interested to see more gameplay. I just hope it it really put me off when they showed the gameplay though, and they had this drop in mechanic where people can just join you. I don't know if I like that because that's what makes me feel like it's like Destiny. Uh, but definitely, yeah, it's a game that I'm interested to see more about. Um, definitely, definitely something I'm excited for. Uh, up at number six, we have Middle Earth Shadow of War, uh, the sequel to the previous uh, Middle Earth game. So it looks like they've just improved on everything and it looks amazing. Uh, one thing I did like is they've, they've I knew they were improving the Nemesis system but uh, 
they went above and beyond. I thought it was like just going to be like, oh, there's a few little tweaks here and there. You can recruit your nemesis and you can recruit orcs and stuff and make an army to go against your own nemesis and oh it just looks so amazing and the the quick wit and the voiceovers for the orcs are amazing uh, it really just made me like the game and it was just nice to see they showed a lot of gameplay they showed uh, uh, some trailer like cutscene stuff so it was just good overall uh, it's what you expect uh, after the previous game but better and it, it just looks amazing in at number five, we have a uh, Bethesda game. The one, one of the two only decent things at the Bethesda conference. I was not happy with the Bethesda conference. Uh, Wolfenstein Two. Uh, so this is a sequel to their obviously new reboot series, and it just looked amazing. The I liked how it started out. I was a little disappointed when it started out because I thought it was like a new IP. Uh, they showed like this like mechanical dog, and it was called Leslie. And it was like really cool, but then it turned out to be uh, Wolfenstein. I was like, ah, but it's still kind of cool, and it's really nice. Um, I've still got to get around to play the the recent uh, Wolfenstein's, but this one just looks amazing. The the bit that really did it for me was there was a little scene where you're in a diner, and a German comes in, and he's like asking for your identification papers, but it's like he's really like smooth and cool about it. It's kind of like Oh, can I have a milkshake? He doesn't. He doesn't look like. He, you know, he he's there to cause trouble. But at the same time, it doesn't feel like he's there to cause trouble. And then it just like it just hits, and it, the accent and oh, it just looks. It sounds and looks amazing. I can't wait. Uh, it's actually making me want to go and play the previous games because uh, I haven't played any of the reboot games. I believe there's a new blood and new order, or new order and old blood. Sorry, uh, so I need to play those. At number four, this was, I wasn't sure if I should put this low on the list because uh, they showed a lot of this last year. Um, so Super Mario Odyssey, it's what you expect from a Mario game. But it seems to be like it's trying to go back to its roots, but not its pure roots, to the N64 roots with uh, Super Mario 64. And it, it just looks phenomenal. It's Super Mario. They've obviously done a good job. And this is actually the game that I think will make me buy the Switch. Because uh, at, at that point, there are going to be tons of other games out, like Splatoon 2 and Arms will be, be out properly. And it'll just be a good time in general. So, yeah, it's definitely going to be buying uh, the Switch because of this game. And I really liked what they did. So, they showed a scene with Pauline. If you don't know Pauline, she's from the original. Uh, Donkey Kong, uh, the one with, where Mario is called Jumpman, and she's like the damsel in distress that Donkey Kong kidnaps. And I thought it was really interesting how they used her because she's in New Donk City, which is obviously a city run by uh, or inspired by Donkey Kong. Uh, and it turns out Pauline is the mayor, and I just like what they did with her. They made her kind of like feel like she was in power, she was like powerful and empowering. Uh, she sort of lit, sung like a jazz number, and it was a really catchy jams number. Definitely, definitely will buy a Switch for this. Uh, it just looks amazing. Uh, I'm not even that big of a Mario fan, but it just blew me away. I'm a huge uh, Super Mario 64, but not so much the other games. Uh, like I wasn't a big fan of Galaxy. It was alright. So that would be interesting how that goes. Uh, number three. We have Days Gone. Now, I wasn't sure when this one started, when they showed this, if I was going to like it or not. Because there's a, I can't remember the name of the game, but there's a biker game, and it's just really shit. It's like badly animated. There's like sex scenes where they just have sex through clothes. It, it, you know what I'm talking about. I don't remember its name. And this trailer for the way out or gameplay, you were like on a bike with a jacket. And I just couldn't get that game out of my head. I was like, oh no, oh no, it's gonna be like, it's gonna make me remind, remind me of this game. It's gonna be. It's going to be obviously a good game, but it's going to be like, oh, I don't want to bike a game, I don't want to bike a game. But then it got really interesting, they sort of went off into the forest, there was like the the freaks or the zombies or whatever they're calling them uh, around, and you had to go save uh, a kidnapped colleague of yours, and it was really interesting to see how you could lure the, the zombies into the enemy camp to take them out, and at the end of the trailer there was like this giant zombie bear, 
And this was really neat because it means that the game is open to infected animals, which you don't really see in zombie games. I know in Outbreak and Resident Evil like games they have them. Uh, but this is the first game I think besides that has animals that are infected. I know The Last of Us was meant to, but they pulled them. Uh, so I'm definitely interested in that. And I, I, I just like that there'd be a bit more variety in the enemies. Because I was a little worried when they showed it last year with the swarming that it was just going to be that one enemy. I was, I'm just glad. I'm just glad there's a bit of variety in the, the enemies. So number two. Uh, this would have made my top. But this is definitely my biggest surprise and uh, from the whole E3. So A Way Out. A Way Out was a game that no one expected. It wasn't even like announced ahead of time. It was one of those games that just snuck in. No one had news. It didn't leak or anything. Uh, so A Way Out is a prison escape co-op game. Uh, you 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 play the role of two guys who meet up in prison, and then you your whole goal is to escape. And I don't know if there's more story to that. There probably is. I want to say there's probably like maybe you kind of got framed and got thrown in, and you're not meant to be there. It was something like that. I feel like there was little clips in the trailer. Where there was stuff happening outside the prison. So I'm sure there's more to the story than just escaping. It just looks amazing. I like cooperative games. And there's not enough cooperative games anymore. Uh, not in the sense of like this. And the way that they showed the gameplay work. Shows that there's like multiple ways to do things. One character is more brainy than the other character. Who is more, sh head, uh, more strong. Uh, so like you could be like a bruiser and do something this way or you could let your buddy go do the uh, distraction or something because they're smart and they can do like distractions. It doesn't look cool. I, it's uh, the first game from a studio called Haze Light. For a first game it just looks amazing. Um, just can't wait really. Can't wait. Um, a lot of this list is a little disappointing because most of them are exclusives for Xbox and I don't really want to buy an Xbox One but I might have to if they keep churning out such high quality games. Uh, but time will tell. And lastly, at number one, Metro Exodus. Um, this game just looked amazing. Um, so you don't know what the Metro games are. They're just like a post-apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic uh, games. They're based on the uh, first one was based on a novel, a Russian novel, and they're just really fun games. It's all about uh, surviving. It has some really cool ideas, and now they're doing another one. And this one just looks amazing. It just tops everything they did in the previous games. Um, so they sort of started you out in like a claustrophobic like bunker. Um, there's like rat creatures that you have to defend against, and then they show you going outside. And this was a really cool, cool thing to see, because in the previous Metro games, they kind of did this. They kind of had this way you would like be underground, but then you come up uh, with a gas mask and you'd be outside. But the problem they did in, had in the previous games was that it was still very linear and claustrophobic. Now they've got like an open world. It's very wide, very fast. And it just looks amazing. I like the contrast between the claustrophobic spaces and the open open world. And it's something that I feel that did let down the Metro games in the previous games. Um, so they just showed like tons of stuff. Like mutants, it's like mutant dogs, mutant rats. Uh, there's even a mutant bear they show off. And I liked how they showed what seemed to be, to me, like there was like multiple ways to tackle situations. Uh, as this guy was going through, he's like, he, sn he snuck past some mutant dogs. He went to the right, snuck around. Uh, it looks like you could just run in down the middle. There's, there looked like there like buildings to the left, and they looked like there's, you could like climb over some things and go around that way. Um, obviously I feel it looks a bit more linear because they were trying to show off in a controlled environment. Um, but it just looked like if that's the case and you have so many options to deal with the situation, that's just great. As a game designer, giving the player more options to play the game in their own way, is it's, it's just good game design, really. It's uh, thinking of your uh, the players first, thinking of who you're catering to. And that is a good way of thinking when you design games. And that's why open world games and RPGs work so well. So they allow you to tackle things in your own way. Uh, if you want to level up magic, you can do that. Or if you want to level up uh, strength, stuff like that. Um, so it just looked amazing. And the last thing they showed, as I mentioned a bit earlier, they had like a mutant bear. Um, it looked really cool. 
but in the trailer the guy sort of like went up to it like tried to like shoot it off a cliff it kind of like started falling and then he just sort of like ran away in my experience i would have just stuck there and tried to kill it um who knows maybe like some rare loot or something like that um but it was a very cool trailer i can't wait to get my hands on it and it was the only thing really from bethesda that i cared for besides wolfenstein 2 uh, the rest of the stuff they sort of had there was uh, Skyrim. And, you know, no one cares for Skyrim anymore because it's been released on, like, ten different consoles now. They're bringing back mods, which kind of, like, didn't work before. It's not going to work this time. Cause, like, who's going to pay money to have gold armor on a crab? I'm sure there's someone out there. Anyway, guys, so that's been my top ten. Again, I want to apologize that I didn't get time to do my E3 conference videos. There's just there's not enough time in the day. Uh, I've been busy with work, we're in the middle of a heat wave, so I haven't had a lot of time to do recording because my room is like a sauna. Uh, so apologies, uh, I'm going to be rebooting my top 10 list as well as my insightful level videos, so look out for those. But I'm going to be away for about two weeks, so don't expect a video anytime soon. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, I've been running gaming. If you do like what you've heard or seen, please click the subscribe button underneath, and I'll see you guys next time.